So you as a young a young boy. Young Turk. A young Turk in Princeton Junction. Mm-hmm. What's the first stuff that kind of got on your radar that you were just like, oh, there's other stuff out there? Well, there's a couple of, I guess there's a few phases. There's, um, my brother uh, is 10 years older than me. And so he was, in my opinion, you know, the coolest person. All right. Um, But he was like into like. Todd Rundgren and Emerson Lake and Palmer and Yes and mm-hmm. The Who. The good and, stuff. Yeah, like, but just like, but he also had David Live, the okay, David yes. Bowie record. Sure, which was at the Tower Theater. Yep. Yes. And so I'm, I guess that's, David Live's like 75? I think so, right? It's... So I'm, I think I'm about six years old. Okay. And uh, he points to this record. We're in his room. And... It's the beginning of like the rumblings of punk rock. Mm -hmm. Uh, So 76, maybe 77, but I think 76. Okay. And my brother, and I'm like asking my brother questions about the bands, you know, and I was like, because I just wanted to know. And when, when he would let me sometimes just sit in his room while he was listening to records and I could just, if I didn't say say anything, I could hang out and listen to records, which is a pretty cool thing Mm -hmm. when you're six and your 16 year old brother is hanging out. Oh yeah. No, that's the, that's like, that's like the, the, the auto bomb now for getting, up to speed. Yeah. You've got this fast lane. Yeah. Well, I mean, I have bigger fast lanes, which I will elucidate. Sure. But at this point, he's playing, you know, he points to David. He's flipping through his records and he points to David Lutton. He goes, you know, people are talking about punk rock. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the first punk rocker, my brother says. Um, and th- it's something about the cover was terrifying to me. He looked like a weird girlish ghost. And I was really like, I found it really compelling and it freaked me out Mm -hmm. like i was kind of afraid of it the way that i was afraid of like slee stacks or something like you know irrationally kind of spooked by something so when i was i still think i'm six and i was allowed to buy two seven inch records i had a plastic record player that i inherited from my sister like Mm -hmm. as a Mm hand-me-down because i think she got she was five years old and she got a stereo okay and got like kansas and stuff like that so I was like, bad I, Prague. Uh, yeah, no, U.S. Jesus, Prague. Jesus Prague. There's no such thing as U.S. Prague. Mm. There's U.S. Art Rock. Right. But yeah, yeah. I think you're, yeah, right. I'll buy that. But so I got, I went to the record store, and what I wanted was I got the two singles. I got "Alone Again Naturally" by Gilbert O'Sullivan. Sure. Because it was the '70s, and I was a sensitive mm-hmm. kid. Yeah. And I got "Fame" by David Bowie. Okay. Because I remembered my brother had had the yeah, and the vo- vocal on "Fame" scared me. Yeah. The diving thing. Fame, 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 fame. Yeah. All that stuff. And I would have been a huge Beatles fan also, but mm-hmm. I didn't know that John Lennon was on it. For some yeah. reason, I just thought of it as David Bowie. Yeah. Um, and it, it took me till way, way later to put piece that together. But those are my first two records. Mm-hmm. You got to be tight bros with uh, the guy on that record you were staring at as a six-year-old. Yeah. Now you're actually knowing that guy. That's the, yeah, that's weird. Yeah. That is weird. It was very weird. That's the, that's always you weird. You know what was weirdest about it? What's that? Not that weird. That it wasn't that weird. That it wasn't that weird. And that is down to that, 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 uh, I, I always say this tough thing because it's like, uh, I, I, what's worse than if I would just say like, well, David, Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like casually. Sure. It's David Bowie. And I, I'd say it not being weird is down to how incredibly gracious that dude was. Like how amazing at making you feel normal mm-hmm. around him. Which is a thing he must have learned. That's a skill. Yeah. To just, it's like, if I ever hope to have a normal conversation I'm ever again in my life. I'm to learn to, to, to let people know that I, that you don't have to avoid, you don't have to feel uncomfortable about mm-hmm. being an enormous fan. Mm-hmm. It just disarmed me, that like is. completely disarmed. And, and a lot of people told the same story. They'd be like, "Yeah, you just like call me up sometimes, I'm like, hey, I thought about you because you were really into this furniture designer, and I'm in this place, and they have a bunch of it, and mm-hmm. just wanted to let you know." And you'd be like, "This guy thought about me," and like it immediately disarm you. Yeah, and it's. But I guess that's like a self-preservation thing for him. Otherwise, he's going to be, uh, he's going to have no one to talk to. Yeah. Well, I mean, but I also think it was like a generosity. I think it was a generosity. Like, just like, let's get through this bit sure. now. Yeah. And, and you mm-hmm. now, then we can, then you can just be at ease more. 
mm-hmm. and know that I'm not going to freak out yeah. if you're like, I really love Ziggy Stardust. You know, like, I mean, like, the first thing I said to him was like, uh, we met, I was recording him for Arcade Fire. And uh, like he, he walked in and he introduced, I introduced, I was like, oh, this is James. He's like, oh, hello. He's kind of normal, very polite, but hello. And we recorded some vocals and he went away. And the next day he came back to do more. And he walked in and he kind of pushed it out of the way. And he's like, I'm so sorry. I had no idea it was you. I just, I just blank. I, I just, of course it was you, but I just, you know, when you were introduced and he was like apologizing to me for not recognizing my greatness or like, you know, or like yeah. who I was. And I'm like, you were totally nice. And yeah. as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> totally appropriate for yeah. our, who we are. Yeah. And, uh, and he said, he said, I'm an enormous fan of your work. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, uh, if you know anything about my work, you know, I'm a, enormous fan of your work because I steal from you liberally. <laughs> and he just leaned into me and he went, mm-hmm. you can't steal from a thief, darling. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's wow, fantastic. that's just in the holster. Yeah. Like you just have that. That's just ready to go. Ready like, that to was, go. that Let's was your, go. you can't like a oh little wink God. and you can't steal from a thief, yeah. darling. And I'm like, that's, yeah. I mean, that's a good opening gambit. You write that in the film. People are like, well, things don't normally work like that, but it's like, that's <laughs> it's a, actually, yeah. You are in a movie for that. Someone's moment. so charming that you it's invisible. It's like a great waiter that you don't even know they're there. That is. Your food just happens. Yeah. That is that is like smooth. Yeah. Yeah? Oh my god. But not like, even smooth, not there's no sliminess to smooth. It's just literally just super on it. Like mm-hmm. just super ca- ability to make you feel like like mm-hmm. you, we're now we're just two friends laughing about this. Isn't sure. it? Ha ha ha. I just told you that I steal from you because you're mm-hmm. one of my heroes yeah. of all time. Yeah. And you've made a, a little joke about how we all steal. Don't we? Us mm-hmm. artists. Ha ha. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like ah! and so you just, so if, if mm-hmm. you manage not to have your head explode mm-hmm. and shoot yourself in the bathroom yeah. then you start to have a friendship. Now he actually, <laughs> encouraged you to get the band back together is that is that a thing well, i heard somewhere it's less less direct than that i, mm-hmm. I was uh, talking to him around the black star time mm-hmm. and i had gone to my wife and said like hey i have a little issue i started writing music mm-hmm. and i realized i've amassed a lot of music and uh-oh you know <laughs> there's a there's a complication you know it's like if we were writing a scene here's the conflict yeah yeah um and I had already spoken to Pat and Nancy and been like, Hey, I'm writing music and I'll play some things for you. And like, I don't know what to do because we broke up this band kind of publicly. <laughs> <laughs> there was, yeah, there was a public component. There was a, there, the was, a, there was a public, uh, there was an announcement mm-hmm. type yeah. component. It was a, kind of a movie. Yeah. That there was kind of kind came of a out. Thing. Yeah. It was a really big event. So mm-hmm. the largest thing my, band did ever yeah. was break up uh-huh yeah so, uh-huh. so that's a complication um and my wife was i was like well i don't you know so i was like i can't I, I maybe i just shouldn't record music and she's like you have a amazing recording studio that you built with your hands mm-hmm. and you make it's a little embarrassing like he, she knows me well enough to be like yeah, what would your 15 year old self said say if you weren't using your studio when you had songs to record yeah and I was like, that's a good point. And I talked to Pat and Nancy. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, I make this music. I'm making this music. And like, what do you guys think? It's like, a, if you think it's LCD sound system, then it's LCD sound system. But if it's not, you know, then I, I'll have to figure something else out because it's like, yeah. th- that's fine. Because mm-hmm. I couldn't go on stage with a bunch of 24 year olds and be like, hello, it's LCD. You know, like, that would be the, that would be the best and it, worst that would thing be the ever funniest in thing. Vegas. Yeah. David Bowie factors into the oh, yeah. assembly. Sorry, I was talking. Sorry, yeah, you're right. Okay, so I was talking to him around the the, the Black Star time, and um, I was saying like, you know, confiding because I didn't tell people this, mm-hmm. and he had made me sign a bunch of confidentiality agreements. Mm-hmm. So I was pretty sure he was going to be cool yeah. with not. Yeah, not that anyone was going to be like. So, David, uh, <laughs> we're hearing. <something>. We, <laughs> we need a quote from you about yeah. LCD sound yeah. system. Because he's just giving quotes left and right. Right. And also, anyone who has a moment with David Bowie is not going to be asking about my stupid band. <laughs> <laughs> like, unless they're literally Give related us the to the story. Me. Yeah. All right. David, one Black quick, star, schmack star. Yeah, we get one question. What's up with this LCD sound system thing? <laughs> We're here and there. Come. Thanks for the quote, David. Clung. <laughs> yeah. that's, not, that's not in the cards. No, but he was just like, he's like, it's, it makes you uncomfortable. 
And I was like, yeah. And he's like, good. You know, it should. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're not doing it, if you're not making yourself uncomfortable, which I thought at the time, I was like, as he was saying it, I'm like, well, I just, I was like, you're not uncomfortable. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then again, that's a stupid thing for me to think because it's like, you know, I'm looking at David Bowie and I'm like, well, if I could be David Bowie tomorrow, I'd just walk around like, hey, screw you. Like, you know, like yeah, I yeah, can yeah. do whatever I want. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm David Bowie. You know, like I would feel like the most confident person in the world. But of course, you know, you get to that through years of like not making young Americans again and making low yeah, yeah. and all sorts of things mm-hmm. that made you, if you care about how people feel about you, which no one that's not deeply damaged cares mm-hmm. to some degree about how people respond to the things they make. Mm-hmm. You know, he had to, he had to be uncomfortable a lot and that's probably been the best thing ever for his. Like I always, I always feel with com- him where people would just be like, Oh, he just changed. It's like, that's the hardest thing in the world. That's the hardest do. thing. He threw it. He was touring <laughs> diamond dogs and halfway through, he crumples it up yeah. and then puts on like, like a Panama hat. And it's the thin white dude. Suddenly like, this is what we sound like now. Yeah. And it's like, that's the hardest. That's not the easiest play. That's the hardest play. Yeah, that's do. crazy. So what if you would have said to him, I'll reform LCD sound system if you reform Tin Machine. <laughs> How do you think? What do you think? I think, he, I, I think he wouldn't have, you know, I think he was busy. <laughs> but I don't um, think he would have ever shied away from playing another Tin Machine show, mm-hmm. actually. Yeah. So it's better than people think the tin machine yes. stuff. So I, I also think he, he said something really interesting. He was talking about Lou, uh, you know, like the Lou, Lou Reed and Metallica record. Mm-hmm. And he was like, that's some of the best writing Lou's done. Yeah. And like people don't, you know, like people make a snap judgment and aren't listening. 